let's talk about phases of matter and how you know which phase of matter you're in. So states of matter or phases of matter is determined by the net forces that are attracting and repelling. So it's kind of logical, right? So a solid has a lot of um, um, forces that are attracting the molecules and not a lot that are repelling them. And a gas is the opposite. There's a lot repelling and not as much attracting. So it's kind of like a tug of war. Um, in a tug of war, there's really only two main forces at play. There's the two opposite teams. Um, in terms of the phases of matter, there's three different forces that we have to take, uh, take into account. So let's go through each one. There's kinetic energy, electrostatic interactions or intermolecular forces, and pressure. So let's talk about kinetic energy first. Um, kinetic energy is the main repelling force, and it's what makes the particles vibrate and move around. And if you remember from before, kinetic energy is the energy of moving particles and is related, uh, connected sort of conceptually to temperature. So temperature is the average kinetic energy. So essentially, this is saying that the more kinetic energy, the higher the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the more the repelling force, which kind of makes sense, I think, in a lot of ways. So let's kind of draw this out here. Um, I sketched it out in pencil, and I'm just going to kind of fill it in while I talk to you about it. So if you imagine you've got little particles and um, they're kind of bouncing around, okay? So this is a higher temperature and I'm gonna draw these little vibrating motiony lines to kind of represent temperature and how, and kinetic energy really. So this is a high, a high temp. And then this scenario here is a low temp. Just kind of comparison, right? So what's gonna happen is because they're moving around so much, they're bouncing off of each other and sort of repelling each other. They're trying to move away from one another. So I'm gonna draw these arrows that represent that. All right, so they're kind of pushing away from each other. Right. And high temperature, they're moving, they're pushing each other away pretty, pretty hard. It's quite a lot of that force that's pushing them away. Let's compare it to a lower temperature. So if you bring the temperature down a little bit, you got those same particles. But this time they're moving a lot more slowly. I'm just gonna draw kind of fewer of these lines to represent that. Maybe that one, maybe just that one. Maybe that one's barely moving at all. Okay. They're just not moving as, as, as quickly, they're not moving as much. So they end up repelling each other a lot less. So I kind of drew the arrows in a little bit not as dark, they're not as dark, they're not as big. That represents less kinetic energy. So high kinetic energy, low kinetic energy. The consequence is perhaps in this case, this might be a liquid. You know, they're a lot closer together in comparison here. And maybe this one, this one definitely looks like a gas to me. Okay. So, Lower temperatures, less repelling force, more likely to stick together, more likely um, for other forces to kind of pull them together and, and affect what phase of matter you're in. Higher temperatures are gases. I mean, we observe this all the time. We know that if we heat up ice, it turns to a liquid, and if we heat up uh, liquid water, it turns to steam. It's pretty intuitive. I think that kind of makes a lot of sense. Okay, so why, so this might be, yeah, this might just be water. Um, yeah, okay, so let's talk about electrostatic uh, forces, interactions, or intermolecular forces. Excuse me. Ooh, man. All right, these are the forces that hold all molecules together. Now, we kind of talked about in last unit at least a little bit about this, but all atoms and molecules have electrostatic forces because they have electrons and protons, and they sort of stick to each other a little bit. Some molecules, particularly polar molecules, um, tend to have more forces that are holding them together. Um, other molecules like nonpolar molecules don't have as many forces, intermolecular forces or electrostatic inter inter interactions that hold them together, but they all have at least some. So if you have something 
that has a lot of IMFs. So let's go. This is high, this is low. Um, there's quite a lot. I'm gonna draw the arrows this way. Kind of drawing these to each other, like little, it's kind of, it's basically magnets. Technically it's different, it's like electromagnets, but it's the same idea. These forces, they're kind of drawing each other in. I draw the arrows, I do like opposite outside ones to say like they're pushing apart and these are kind of pulling together. I don't know if that makes sense to you, I hope so. Um, but yeah, that's the idea, all right? In this other scenario, these forces, electrostatic, intermolecular, whatever you wanna call them, these forces are a lot lower, they're much smaller. They're still drawing each other in. Again, I'm gonna draw them in a little bit more finely, a little bit more lightly. They're kind of holding each other together, just not so efficiently, not so well, much lower forces holding them together. So these are probably two different types of molecules. These could be the same, maybe these are both water. Maybe like this is water and this is like um, acetone. So acetone, um, if you've ever taken nail polish off your fingers, um, you know it, uh, it uh, evaporates very quickly. Um, it has a much lower boiling point. It, it, uh, there's not as much forces that are holding it together. So that might be the difference there. So again, perhaps in this particular case, maybe this is a gas and maybe, oops, other way around. I use the same color again. I color coded this badly. Maybe this one is a gas and maybe this one is a liquid, right? Because it's holding it together. It's gonna affect what phase of matter it's in. So things holding it together, more likely to be liquid or solid. Forces that are pushing things apart, more likely to be like gases or liquids as opposed to solids. Okay, the final one here to talk about is pressure. So pressure is the force of gas molecules pushing up against the container, but also pushing up against themselves, like other molecules. So the main uh, source of pressure for us in our kind of daily lives is um, atmospheric pressure. So the atmosphere is pushing on us. The more dense molecules, they are, molecules are packed together, um, the more of these forces you're gonna have. So it's pretty obvious when you look at this diagram here, Let's just say each one of these molecules is bumping up same temperature. So I'm going to draw all these arrows with the same kind of length, the same kind of um, same kind of force here. They're all just kind of pushing up against each other. Maybe this one's up against the wall. There's just way more force the more molecules you have. So this one is going to be. Um, a high pressure, this one's a low pressure, so same pattern here. Um, this is definitely a gas. Just looking at it, I can tell that's a gas. You know, this one might be a gas too, but it looks way more liquidy. Looks like it could possibly maybe be a liquid. I'm just gonna put like, let's put, put down here, liquid with a question mark. Maybe it could be a liquid. Or it's pretty close to becoming a liquid. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more pressure and it'll become a liquid. Um, so anyways, those are some properties, um, and these are how they, hopefully these visuals have helped you to understand um, how these three kinetic energy, electrostatic interactions and pressure help determine whether you, um, whether a state of matter is in, um, uh, which phase of matter it's in. Um, of these, this one is inherent to the molecule. So let me add that in here. Um, This one can't change. It is part It is part of the identity of a molecule. Water has a certain attractive force to each other. Um, acetone has a certain attractive force to each other. Carbon dioxide has a certain attractive force to each other. You can't change that. Um, temperature, easily changed, very easily changed. It's changeable. Um, and pressure is also changeable. 
So when you're starting to look about, hey, what's the state of matter? Usually we're really concerned about temperature and pressure um, and then intermolecular forces or electrostatic interactions, like you can't really affect those because it's just the property of the molecule. So um, yeah, what we're gonna do next is, uh, let me just double check. Maybe we'll do it in this unit. Maybe we'll do it right now. Yeah, let's go for some examples of that. Um, so changes to boiling point. Sorry, got a little bit, a little bit stuck here. So if we, the, the boiling point is going to sort of depend on um, all of these different, um, these different factors, right? Um, real, actually, really, it's going to change. It's going to be affected by the IMFs and the pressure. So, give me just one second here. I just wanted to draw these quick these out for you really quickly before I got started. Okay, so looking back, we know that boiling point is the temperature of the transition between the liquid and the gas. So I've drawn here two different scenarios um, to look at the two forces that are gonna affect this. Obviously, if you increase temperature, things are gonna start to boil. But the question is not about the temperature, it's that like, what temperature will it start to boil? Um, so, um, I've kind of set these scenarios at like in the same situation. So let's, yeah, let's just go through them. I think this will make sense. Okay. So there's two factors that affect these. There's, um, electrostatic, uh, forces and pressure. So going back here, um, kinetic energy is what's going to make the water boil at a certain temperature. The water's going to start to boil. Um, when those repelling forces of the, of the, of the motion of the particles is enough to defeat the attractive forces of the electrostatic in interactions and the pressure. So there's two things that are keeping them together, one that's pulling them apart. So let's hold, for this first one, we're gonna hold pressure constant and we're just gonna focus on electrostatic forces. Okay, so for this um, example, we have air molecules and air molecules, there's a whole bunch of different, air molecules are made up of lots of different types of molecules, but you know, it's gonna exert a pressure. But in this case, they're both in the same room. That pressure is the same. So that's gonna to try to keep everything from boiling. So the only difference here is the difference between water and acetone. So water has really high IMFs or high um, interactions. In comparison, acetone has pretty low interactions. interactions. Okay, so I can kind of show you how maybe I would draw that. Um, oops, that's the wrong color. So, whoa, these are really small, but maybe you guys can get it. Um, they are pulling at each other a lot. Very, very strong. And these ones are considerably weaker. I know it's so tiny. You guys could probably barely see it, but there it is. So um, at a temperature, um, let's just say we're at about 70 degrees Celsius. Let's set the temperature. Let's just say this is at about 70 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, the acetone is absolutely going to start boiling, right? Because the forces that are holding it together are not as strong, so it's going to boil. Whereas these forces, this is not going to boil at the same temperature um, because all of the forces added up um, are not uh, strong enough to make that happen. So if we kind of added up all these arrows. So the intermolecular forces, um, there's also, you got the heat, the movement that's trying to separate them. Um, they're both they're both of the same energy. It's just not gonna boil. Again, in this case, the low interactions are why that's true. So that's one of the main reasons why different substances have different boiling points, all based on their individual properties. Um, specifically, acetone um, does not have hydrogen bonding. Um, and water does. 
Uh, they both have um, dipole-dipole interactions, but anyways, that's if you uh, got into that. Okay, let's take a look at air pressure. Um, this one might be familiar to you from the, uh, the Mount Everest lab or video, whatever we're calling it at that moment. Um, this is um, high air pressure. And this is much lower air pressure. And you can tell that because of um, just the density of the particles. This one has a lot of, of air molecules, various types of air molecules, and they are gonna exert a lot of force. And in this case, let's just, we'll keep the, the substance the same. So water is going to attract itself, obviously, just like it did over here. So we'll throw in some little arrows just to keep that constant. It's gonna attract itself. Okay, um, let's set the temperature. Mm, 70 degrees is a little low for this. Let's go, let's go like 90 degrees Celsius. I think that's a little bit more reasonable for both of these. Okay, um, so even at 90 degrees Celsius, um, if you are a uh, very high altitude, uh, water is absolutely going to boil because again, the force that's pushing down on this is not very high, but it's way higher with way more molecules pushing down on the surface and preventing it from boiling. So this one is going to boil. This one will not boil. Okay. So it's kind of an example of how um, these forces kind of come to play. Um, if you took the acetone and you uh, moved it to a very low uh, pressure uh, situation, it would just like, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be vaporized super, super quick, even much more compared to water. Um, if you went below sea level, way more atmospheric pressure, it's going to raise the boiling point. So um, the effect here is that um, increased pressure, um, electrostatic forces will increase boiling point and pressure will also increase boiling point. Um, yeah, I think the opposite is true for melting points. Um, I think, nope, I think it's the same effect. No, it'll lower the melting, it'll lower being at high pressure. Um, yeah, it should have the same effect. Anyway, I'll keep thinking about that one. Um, it's a good thing to think about melt, how this will affect melting points. Uh, but there you go. Uh, hopefully that kind of makes sense um, the, with all of that. So again, it's all about just balancing out the forces. So let's stop there. And then um, we're going to get into phase change diagrams, which is when the actual unit packet will start. So thank you all.